Okay, guys, welcome to the final talk of the day. We have Daniel from Onfido, who, as you can see, is going to be talking about human machine symbiosis. So please welcome Daniel. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, so, uh, yeah, today's talk is going to be on human machine symbi symbiosis uh, at Onfido, uh, what we're doing there to uh, automate uh, identity verification online. Um, so let me start with a bit of who I am, uh, just so you guys get to know and also see a bit of the type of people that we hire. Uh, my name is Daniel Serrano. Uh, I'm, uh, I studied in uh, Technical Lisboa here in Lisbon. Uh, I'm a software engineer in the Identify team. Uh, I work these days mostly with Ruby, Elixir, and uh, a tiny bit of Python, uh, though not that much. We have much better people at Python than me. Uh, so the outline for this talk uh, is going to be this one. So I'm going to start and talk about the uh, manual photo face check, uh, how we uh, automated it uh, via automatic uh, face match, and then uh, automation of uh, ways of catching spoofs. Uh, via um, algorithms for spoof detection. Then I'm going to move on to the manual video face check. Uh, and, after, uh, and in that, uh, I'm going to go towards the automation of that uh, variant of our offering, uh, explaining you the uh, audio challenge and the head turn challenge. I'm going to go for ways of making it better and some of the future uh, stuff that we're going to do. So we start out with the manual photo face check. Uh, this is the process for you to verify yourself uh, online using the Onfido SDK. Uh, you start out uh, on the screen from the left. Uh, you upload uh, a photo of your uh, identity document. That can be a driving license, passport, or uh, ID card. Uh, you see if it's uh, readable, and then you take a selfie. Uh, this is, of course, uh, in the beginning, uh, a manual process. So we had uh, people actually see and check if the photo of the selfie matched the photo of the document, if, if it wasn't tempered, uh, and either the document or the selfie itself. Um, but we wanted to automate this. And so in order to automate this, we uh, created a service that lives outside of our uh, main application monolith. Uh, we called it the face check service, and it's written mostly, mostly in, uh, or everything uh, in this part, uh, in Elixir. Uh, Elixir is a fairly young language, but a really powerful one. It runs on top of the BIM VM, so that's the Erlang virtual machine, um, and it's been yeah, working really great for us. Uh, we started out automating the facial check, uh, the facial match processing. So we integrated with a third-party ML provider, and uh, that allows us to uh, go to market, so to speak, in terms of the automation part, uh, real quick. Um, we had to understand this uh, third-party provider uh, really like, deeply, and for that, we uh, did a lot of data analysis. Um, a lot of the people that we have in our service team uh, did a bunch of work gathering data and understanding in which thresholds that uh, that third-party provider returns to us between zero and one, what we could uh, automatically fail due to the faces not matching at all. We could uh, automatically complete because we were uh, almost certain that that was uh, the same face. Uh, and two other cases, the one that you see there into, uh, between X and Y, where we uh, are not sure uh, the machine itself is not sure, uh, or from Z uh, above, uh, which we consider to be uh, a very similar suspicious uh, comparison. So this was the state of affairs at this point. We had automated the face match. Uh, we don't, no longer needed, uh, for a, a big portion of the cases, the human intervention. Uh, we only needed to cater for one other case uh, in terms of the automation of the photo uh, face check. And that's what we've talked before. That's the automations. And you saw that I hinted about automations in the slide before, uh, where I told about suspicious similarities. Uh, there's other types of spoofs. So this is a, another type of spoof, a very basic one, where people just uh, try and take a selfie of the document itself. 
So they upload the document and they will take the selfie to the actual face of the document. This would be one that would match, of course, in the one that's very similar, but it will also get flagged if we have another uh, sophisticated system to catch these types of spoofs. Another type of spoof uh, is photos of screens. You can imagine someone stealing your passport and then just going online, finding you on Facebook and uploading that selfie of yours. In order to tackle this, we introduced uh, our first um, in-house machine learning algorithm for spoof detection developed by the research team that we have in-house. Um, and this is mostly done in Python. Uh, this is, of course, uh, Python is kind of the go-to language when it comes to machine learning and uh, data stuff. So uh, we use it uh, extensively in, at our company. We introduced two versions of this. First, we started out with version one, which leveraged classic machine learning algorithms. Um, and it was developed very quickly because uh, we wanted to go to market really quickly on this. We were um, having to uh, do manual, the manual face uh, tool was still being used uh, by a lot of the manual part and we wanted to get rid of the manual part as much as possible to make it uh, quicker for our customers as well, uh, but also because in terms of money, it's just easier to just make a machine do things for us. Uh, it uh, increased the spoofing automation for about 20%, but we knew we could go uh, better, and we were already, when we released V1, working on V2. V2 uh, uh, worked with uh, deep learning algorithms, uh, state-of-the-art ones, uh, and it achieved much better results at about 80% of automations of spoofs. So if you can imagine when you have uh, spoof automation done and face matching done by a machine, your checks go fast. So this was the state of the art then uh, in terms of our internal pipeline for face check. We had the monolith calling our face check service, which we knew would eventually become a uh, a little octopus of its own, contacting multiple uh, parties, internal and external ones, to provide a completely automated check. But still, our customers wanted more. Our customers wanted more robustness, and we knew we could give, them, we could give that to them. So we introduced another check, which we called the liveness uh, check, and internally we refer it to as the video face check. Let's see an example of how the process looks in real life. The, position, the person positions its face in the center, then uh, she says three digits out loud and moves the head, performs the gesture that we tell them to, we record it, and it's done. What this introduces is an extra level of security. Uh, you now don't have uploads of Facebook photos. You have to prove in real time that you've, you are who you say you are. The document matches the video that you just recorded in real time. But the problem with this is we just introduced two other challenges. We introduced an audio one, verifying that the person is saying the digits that uh, we asked them to. And we also introduced another challenge, the movement one. So suddenly, we have some, some more stuff to automate. This could be very hard, but as you guys are familiar with, and you're, uh, some of you may be uh, software engineers as well yourselves, uh, and even if you worked with uh, any video in your life, you know that the video is just a set of frames. Uh, so we could leverage what we have already built for photos into the video face automation. And that's exactly what we did. So we introduced the the timing, the time factor into the algorithms that we have already developed for photo. And we uh, introduced smart ways of understanding um, and leveraging the photo, uh, the photo tech that we had uh, already developed into videos. The thing that was missing was audio transcription, right? And the movement challenge. So in order to automate that, we integrated uh, with uh, yet another uh, third party provider. Uh, for audio transcription. And, you know, as you can tell by the image, uh, this third-party provider had quirkinesses of its own. Uh, one of those was the uh, matching of transcripts. 
So it wasn't smart enough to understand that uh, in the context that we were recording the videos, asking for digits, we wanted to see, uh, we wanted to get the number three when the person uh, is, doesn't have a very good accent and just says three. So we ended up having to do this sort of whitelisting of uh, transcript, the of transcriptions into our face check service that you saw earlier in Elixir. Uh, things like tree and three, we want to be identified as three, and things as O or zero, it's the digit zero. Another thing was uh, the languages that are being used. So we want uh, people in the US that are Spanish native speakers, for instance, to be comfortable using our app. We don't want them to have to speak English. We want them to speak in whichever language is uh, most familiar to them. So we had to work with our mobile SDK team and uh, find heuristics and also actual de de decision making to make it so that the backend knows what language to ask that third party provider. Because you can't just go um, trans transcri transcribe me this audio to text and it will just know because it has to have an int of the, which language it's uh, transcribing from. So that was it in terms of the audio transcription. We solved these two main problems and uh, we had uh, automatic audio transcription working and verifying that the audio was being the one that we, that the, that we asked the person to record. Uh, then we needed the head turn challenge to be fixed as well. Um, and by fixed I mean automated because we don't think things are working properly when they're all manual. So we introduced yet another algorithm. Uh, the add turn estimation microservice in Python as well. Uh, and this allowed us to automate the process of understanding if the person had completed our movement challenge correctly. This was wired towards ver very convincing turns uh, to avoid false passes. And it was developed very quickly uh, by our awesome research team that really just worked tirelessly to get this thing working really, really quickly. So now that we have all these services, we have the monolith contacting the face check service, in, uh, interacting with the anti-spoofing system, the external provider for face match, the external for provider for audio, the in-house machine learning for uh, head turn, we needed to make it better. And the way that we made it better was to look at the bottlenecks for us. And these guys were costing us some bucks. So the audio and the face match were external providers, right? Uh, and also, as I explained, they weren't great. So having the experience with head turn and with spoof, we ended up noticing that, yeah, the one that we are most knowledgeable about is um, the face match. So we tried to terminate that one first. Um, and yeah, say hello to our in-house machine learning algorithm for face match. Uh, this was uh, one that we also developed in-house, obviously. Uh, V1 was run in tandem with uh, the, uh, the third-party provider that I had described previously. It ran in ghost mode. We started collecting results. And uh, we actually averaged those results uh, in a special way, uh, so to speak, to make a, a, better, a better outcome of what we had. Uh, in V2, we expect to deprecate the third-party ML completely. Again, kudos to our research team. Uh, in order to improve it even further, we're working now on a lip tracking version. Uh, I have to run a bit because I'm running out of time. Uh, the lip tracking algorithm is now developed as well. Uh, it will help us uh, in tandem with the audio to contribute to the liveness uh, check. In the future, uh, well, we see new types of spoofs every day. People use uh, rubber, uh, rubber masks. Uh, people, I'm sure you guys have heard of uh, deep fakes. We're looking into that as well. We want the algorithms to be more robust. We want to roll out more services like this to improve the features, build up on it, leverage the architecture that we've built uh, using the face check service and powered by Elixir, which is a very powerful language. Keep learning and keep sharing. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you for coming. I know it's late, so thanks for hearing me. Uh, if you, just a little bit, <laughs> thanks for the clapping, but if you found these problems any interesting, uh, you should know that we're hiring, so uh, we're on Fido. Just go to onfido.com slash jobs. Uh, yeah, let's do it.
Okay, we probably have time for one or two questions, Max. Does anyone have any questions for Daniel at this point? You're all just thinking about the game, aren't you? I know how it works. Okay, well, if you do have any questions, I'm sure Daniel and the team will, um, will be around to answer any questions you have. And as Daniel says, they're hiring loads, so go check them out. Um, another round of applause for Daniel, please.